APIs, what, why, and how. Uh, for this session, we have uh, with us speaker Devi, ma'am. And uh, she is a freelancer programmer, consultant, and a trainer. She has done her MTech in, computer sa in computational science from in Indian Institute of Science. She is currently working as an architect, lead developer for Power to Fly. I request ma'am to start the session. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Tanmish. Uh, good morning, one and all. Uh, I hope you had a wonderful uh, keynote session. And the house is full here. And I hope I'll uh, satisfy all of you uh, at least a bit. Yeah, let's start the session. So I'm, uh, we're going to talk about uh, REST APIs and why they're useful, what are they, and uh, how do you go about designing a one, and what are the choices uh, one should make while choosing a library to make a one, right? Uh, so I work for Power to Fly, which uh, connects women to uh, remote or part-time jobs. Uh, our platform is such that uh, it's a it's a web <coughs> it's a website like LinkedIn for women, uh, wherein we had to develop uh, in-house APIs for ourselves for our sites. That's where. Um, all this understanding or uh, diving into REST APIs has uh, come into picture. Uh, let me share that with you. So what is an API? Uh, so APIs are basically a programmable interface. All the context of this talk, I'm going to be only with uh, web services, right? Um, uh, REST APIs are possible with in other contexts, but uh, we are going to stick only for web services. What is an API? It's a programmable interface. As uh, we are uh, being humans, we interact with computers or websites by, I mean, uh, manually, right? But if we want to make those web services be interacted through the programs, how do we do that? It is via APIs. So for computer programs to communicate with each other, that's via APIs. So what does, uh, what does it mean by designing an API or having an API? It's designing a format for the client uh, to communicate with the server. So a server is offering an API, a service as an API, and uh, it has to have a format on how to request for something to be done, and in return, what to expect as a response. How does it respond? Like, like our languages or the programming languages, they have certain rules or specification, every language, right? Uh, whether we uh, use it in uh, communication manually or through programs. So similarly, APIs have a set of rules and specifications. Uh, so why are they useful? Why are APIs useful? You might have seen uh, that if you are a developer and uh, if you are doing a core of, uh, let's say we are developing a product. Not everything we can build from the scratch, right? We use third party services like Amazon Web Services or Stripe Payments or Elasticsearch or Solar, anything. We have lots of software which has already been written in different technology stacks. So they are offered as services through APIs for us to use uh, so that we don't need to reinvent the wheel from the scratch. Or um, the best part of the APIs is that we don't need to bother of uh, what the technology stack is for AWS. If you are using AWS as a story, uh, storage for storage, you don't need to bother about what is the technology stack they are using or which programming language it has written. You don't bother about it. You just think of what is the API and how should you request. Uh, I just want to dump all my images onto AWS. And I'll just look at the API, nothing else. I'm not bothered about, about uh, the technology stack or anything else. Uh, so uh, public APIs, it lets you glue in um, different technology stacks or uh, languages of choices, right? And um, not all APIs uh, need to be public. We One can have a company inside, they can have private APIs, they're not exposed to the public. It's not uh, for the outside world um, to be used, to use them, but it is just for them. You might have uh, used Slack for communication or uh, almost all of you use Facebook. 
you've got my mobile app on your mobiles and a uh, website, right? But not both of them are separate in their UI, not the whole technical stack. There wouldn't be the application, uh, the application totally wouldn't be separately written for mobile app and separately written for the uh, website, right? There is a lot of common thing, the code, on which there is a layer, the UI layer is separate. So the, they expose, the, 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 the core Facebook is exposed as an API on which the UI talks to them, right? We'll see what, how APIs look like and so uh, now that we know a bit of what API means, we'll see what is a REST API. What is REST there? So REST uh, there as an acronym, it's a representational state transfer. Uh, it's all about a style of architecture of how do you model uh, the entities that you have. In object oriented world or OOPS world, we, we talk about entities as uh, objects, right? We call the entities that you play with or, or deal with as objects, whether it is customers or orders or uh, jobs or talents or whatever you are dealing with. They are all called as objects. But here in REST world, they are uh, called as resources. So the primary focus of the design is on resources in uh, designing REST APIs. So when you think of your application, you should think of the resources. What, all, what are the resources that I have while designing a REST, REST API? Um, and then the URLs. So REST APIs, uh, in REST APIs, the resources are identified by URLs. Each uh, resource is uniquely identified by URLs. I uh, will come, to, come uh, to there. And the best part of REST APIs is that it takes the full advantage of HTTP. HTTP as a protocol, it's so sophisticated that it has got its own uh, uh, methods, get, post, put, delete, you might have heard, we'll get into them and the response codes uh, along with the status, right? REST takes full advantage of them. We'll see how, right? When I say um, each resource is identified by a unique URL, I mean this. So let's take as, as, a, a, as an example, let's take a uh, e-commerce site or something like that, wherein we have customers and uh, orders, orders placed by them. So what are my resources in my e-commerce site? I've got products, I've got customers, I've got orders, and I've got uh, maybe items, right, in the, uh, in the order. So they are my uh, primary resources, primary resources. And uh, what are the actions? One customer, uh, <coughs> one customer can place a new order, or edit an order, or delete an order, or things like that. They're all actions. Right? In the, in the non-REST uh, world, you would say slash customer slash add slash order or slash customer slash order slash add. That add comes into the URL in non-REST world. Uh, we'll see how uh, REST world takes care of it. So what are the URLs here? Slash customers. It represents the collection of all the customers that you have in your uh, in your uh, web service. Uh, if when I say customer slash five, this is going to identify a particular customer with ID five, okay? How it is stored, whether it is a DB or whether it is a, uh, whether it is a uh, uh, RDBMS or a non RDBMS stuff, I don't care, right? We, we are designing an API for our e-commerce site, let's say that. Uh, so customer slash five is is going to represent um, a customer with ID five, and all his orders are going to uh, going to sit at customer slash five slash orders, and a particular order can be uh, fetched via via its uh, ID, and so on. We'll we'll uh, come into the details a bit later. Uh, but the, the main point here is you don't have the actions in the URIs. So you don't have 
order slash edit, order slash delete, uh, or something like that, order slash create in the URLs because it is a REST world and HTTP, we will rely on HTTP verbs rather than putting the actions in the URLs. Uh, so, what are the HTTP verbs that I have been talking about? So, HTTP as a protocol, it has got um, <coughs> many, many verb, many methods uh, get the, the most important things and uh, most popular ones are get, post and put and delete. So, uh, which one of them is used where? Get is, get is used uh, for retrieving a resource. So, uh, you just want to get the information. You do not want to change the state of anything in the server, but you just want to get the information. Let us say you want to see the orders of, of a customer uh, who has placed few. So, you are not changing anything on the server end. You are just retrieving. Then you would use get. Post is for creating resources. So, let us say when an order is placed, a new order a resource is going to be created at the server, right? Then HTTP post is being used. And let us say if you want to update an order, let us say you want to change the quantity of something or you want to modify an order, then the HTTP verb that you will be using is put and uh, for delete, it is delete. Um, uh, here you can see that there is a slight overlap between post and put. Uh, both can be used for creating a resource, but the choice uh, comes from this. So, get, put and uh, delete are item potent. What do you mean by item potency is, um, so how many ever times you, uh, you do that action, getting or putting or deleting, it is the same, it, it does not change the server state. But if you post um, the same thing to a server, the state will change. We will we'll see that as an example. Um, okay. This is uh, slightly blurred. Sorry for that. Um, so, this is what uh, is our example. We have got customers, we have got orders and items and products. Uh, so, this is the documentation that I am going to give uh, to, my, to my API users. Um, what is it? The customer's endpoint, meaning the customer's URL is going to support get and post. What does it expect? What does it expect? It expects a name, which is a string as an input in the request and it replies back with the name and the self URL and orders, orders URL in the response. Uh, let us see. Let us see how it behaves. Uh, before going into uh, the, the example, I want to just say that how should a REST API be? It should be simple. It should be simple for us as humans to read and understand or comprehend what it uh, means. So, JSON, JSON uh, is a kind of default standard or XML and HTML can also be used as, um, as uh, the language between client and server, but uh, JSON is the most uh, predominant one. So, that the, the programmers, the developers also can read it. The API should be consistent across. What does it mean? So, when I say the URLs here, here I do not say slash customer at one place and customers at another place. So, the API should be uh, consistent across. It should have the, the URL should be guessable. Whenever I say customer slash 5, I should be able to guess that uh, the orders URL would be slash orders slash something with ID, I, uh, with ID there. So, once you, once you work with a REST API, the, the, uh, working with any other REST API should be easy and guessable and backward compatible. What does it mean? Let us say AWS, you are using AWS uh, for your project and uh, and you, are, you have gone live. Uh, things are uh, fantastic and your website is getting lots of hits. You are storing all your uh, assets and images uh, or videos in, in Amazon Web Services. And suddenly, let us say Amazon changes its API. What happens? Your product will be, I mean your website will be down because they have changed their API. The next time you would not rely on 
AWS anymore. You won't use them, right? Why? Because it it will cause you uh, as a user the downtime. So APIs, whenever uh, one designs an API, a public API especially, it should the the designers or creators of API should think of backward compatibility in mind. So if I'm going to add a new feature to my API, how should it be in the future? How can it support few other things in future? And if something is going to change at the core, how am I going to take care of it in future? So that um, for, um, foresight should be there in designing, while designing the API. And actually maintaining a version also makes, makes it easy for um, maintaining the backward compatibility. We'll see how uh, versions are there. And Hattios, we'll get into Hattios also a, a bit later. Uh, so uh, we'll see example of order ex orders API. So in the starting, my database is empty and I don't have any customers, right? Uh, I'm assuming um, curl, most of you might have used. Curl is a HTTP client uh, in which you can use on Unix. And it takes a, an argument, the method, HTTP method with minus six option. And I'm assuming that my API server is sitting here. API.x.com is my API server, right? And slash customers, uh, slash v1 is to maintain the backward compatibility. The version has come into picture. Now let's say if I want to change the API uh, later, then I'll put v2, v2 there, so that the users that are, that are reliant on me wouldn't drop their, uh, I mean, their website will not be um, down because my API has changed. Uh, so when I request for it, for this URL, what am I getting? I'm getting, I'm getting HTTP 1.1. These are all HTTP headers with a status 200, status code, okay. What does it mean? A status code 200 means everything went well. And here is the response that you have asked for. Because I don't have anything in my database yet, what is the response that I've got? It is an empty list. I don't have any customers. The server has replied that I don't have any customers. What is the content type here? It's JSON. So the, the, client, the client is asking the server through this URL slash customers and the server has responded with, the, with a status code and a content type and this is the response. This dictionary that you can see is, a, is the response. Now let's create a customer to see. What do we, uh, which uh, HTTP verb uh, do we use for creating a resource? It's post, right? So uh, in, in the documentation, in the documentation, uh, we have seen that it expects a name to create a customer. What is the name type? It's a string of length 64, of max length 64. So let's, um, let's use post. My endpoint is still slash customers because I am uh, trying to create a customer, right? Customer resource. So uh, with the name Alice. So the client is just, uh, the client is knowledgeable only about the API URLs, nothing else. How the server is adding the customers, where the uh, ser uh, server is adding the uh, data, whether it is maintaining in the RDBMS or a NoSQL database or in a flat file system, I don't care. The client doesn't care. It just knows the URL, nothing else. So what did it respond with? The server has uh, responded with, I mean, I have omitted the few headers here, uh, which are redundant in this context. The, the server has responded with 201 as a status code and a created as a status. So the server says that, okay, I have created the resource that you have asked for. And where did I create? How you can access it? It is the location header. So I have created a customer with ID one with the data that you have given. That is the server response. So if I want to see the customer one, I can go and see now. How do I see? I have to ask for the server, ask the server again. What will the HTTP verb be? 
it is again get right uh, um, sorry here get is always used for retrieving a resource so i want to get and see how the customers slash one is how is the first resource so what do i get i get back from the server name alice and few links uh, we will see what those links mean in a, in a bit. So, we, we started with an empty database where we did not have any customers um, and we have got we have created a customer with a with a particular name and we could see the details we could get back the resource. Now, let us say I want to change the name of the customer how do I change something once once I have created a resource. Uh, many a times it is not just the same right we want to change it or update it how do we do it in the APIs it is through put method put method of HTTP. So, it was name Alice before and I am changing the name as Bob ok. So, server again responds with 200 ok right meaning what you have requested for is done that the name has changed. Now, if we request for slash customer slash one, it would give back the response as name Bob all right. So, how do we delete? Uh, sorry, I, I should have kept here uh, curl minus x, it was a typo. So, curl minus x delete, I can delete it like this. So, any resource you can create it, you can update it, uh, you can delete it what else you can do I mean any resource or any object the actions that you can do is adding editing deleting nothing else right. So, rest is based upon HTTP to take these actions yeah. So, we let us uh, let us go back and see what these links mean here. So, in browsable web when we open our um, uh, browser and brow open a website we do not need to be taught where to go go on how to go on we just see a link which is interesting to us and we see all the available links where we can go and just click the link right and we uh, it will take us further uh, that is the way we navigate as human beings. Um, in APIs how does the program know what is available as a next step or how does the program know uh, what it can do at this particular state it is through hat yours. So, um, let us say you open the Facebook site you can see sign in button or, uh, or sign in link or if you have signed in already you would say post message something like that right. So, if it is through restful rest APIs and the state is that um, and if it is if I am asking for if I am requesting for the home page uh, uh, as, uh, through rest then I should have the links of what all can I do, how do I post a message through API, how do I add a friend through API etcetera etcetera. So, that is called uh, that is uh, that is what is meant by Hattios, it is how you navigate through the API uh, programmatically. So, here when we asked for customers, when we requested for customers with an ID 1 we have got the orders link also see you have asked for customer right now and you would be you could be interested in the orders that he has placed already. So, you have the orders information you can get the orders information here by requesting that URL that is what uh, is meant by hat we will we'll see examples of hat as the orders link. So, from the customers from the first customer we have got all the orders let us see let us request for this URL what do I get what do I get I am I am asking I am requesting for a particular order I want to see all the details. Then I have got a self URL which means that it is just the same sorry here there is a typo self is wrong here sorry 
um, the customer the customer for this order is customer slash one and what is the order actually it has got some date and items what are the products that uh, that were in the order um, uh, so hatios actually adds so much of richness to rest through rest because it lets the program intelligently handle on how to navigate or what are all the possible actions as a next step rather than asking um, the server every time what is the possible action right now uh, yes now that we know a bit of uh, rest apis how they should be let's see um, how to choose a library so let's let's say you are using django or flask to build your um, websites how do you choose a library you won't uh, start with scratch right so start from scratch um, when a data comes in here here how did we how did we add a customer by by um, posting this data right name is equal to alice uh, but the library should make sure that that name is a string type and below length 64 as the api documentation says here we have documented that the name is a string type and it should uh, it should not be more than 64 who takes care of that so there should be a data data validation layer um, before the api in the uh, in the implementation of the api and authentication and authorization it's a most important thing that you don't want everybody to create uh, customers in your website right not anybody can post uh, any data to your website uh, to your api and create customers in your database it's not what you intend to to do so uh, there has to be an authorization and uh, uh, authentication layer for your api so that uh, so that not everybody can do whatever they want whether the user is your uh, service user or, or not and the so there are n number of libraries even for django or flask or anything actually any framework that you that you can choose but almost all of them are very tightly coupled with the orms of the databases so what's wrong with that once you have designed your database the the the, the, the libraries which are tightly coupled with our orms will generate the APIs on the fly. You do not need to do anything as a developer. You just put in the library and uh, maybe do a few meta, meta stuff and it generates the whole API for you without you taking care of it. But what is the problem with that? Whenever you change your database structure or do a migration, you can do a migration inside. But what happens to the API and uh, what happens to the clients which are relying on the API, they are all lost right they, they won't work anymore so it's not a good idea to have a very uh, tight coupling between your uh, databases and the apis because the databases are in inner stuff you can take care of them through migrations or anything else but apis are public facing they should never be uh, non backward compatible yeah and the libraries um, uh, should should uh, support pagination like you do not want to show all the customers on one single page right I just want uh, 50 of them to show on my first page or etc etc et so the, the API library should be able to uh, support pagination uh, what do you mean by rate limits there uh, you might have seen with Twitter or uh, Google APIs or uh, any 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 uh, good APIs, um, they'll have rate limit that you as a user cannot request more than 300 requests per maybe hour, let's say, so that their servers are not too overloaded. They will decide that number. The API uh, writer or the API creator or the designer will decide that number based on their architecture and the servers. What, uh, how much load can they take? Based on that number, they'll give you a rate limit to use. So if it if it crosses that, they'll say sorry, we can't handle the request because they they need to have a 
resource estimation. So, rate limits are also are also one thing to be taken care of and obviously filters. Uh, yeah. So, I would like to talk about a bit more about authentication and authorization here. Uh, filters filters. Okay. So, filters is um, here, here in the example, see I want to see all the completed orders, right. I want, I don't want, I am not interested in all the orders. At the same time, I am not, in, I don't have the ID, specific ID. I am not interested in just viewing a particular order. I just want to see, see all the completed orders. So, the, the, the API library that you are relying on should have that support of filtering, right, completed equal to true or all the orders of a particular uh, user, something like that. So, filters is an important thing to be taken care of. Uh, yep. So, authentication and authorization. Authentication and authorization, there are uh, different levels of doing them. One thing, one simple thing is that uh, do a global authentication. What do you mean by a global authentication? Uh, let us say I have uh, a service to offer as an API, I will just give you a secret token. Whoever has that secret token in their request, I will allow them to use my API, nothing else. I am done with that. Uh, but how do you manage uh, authorization or how, uh, uh, what are all the resources that the user has access to and what are all the resources that the user does not have access to with it, etc. have to be figured out. Um, most of you might have used S3, Amazon's S3 or uh, any APIs. What do they do? How do, you, how do they give a user token? They will have a public token and a secret key, a, a public key and a private key uh, through, which, through which the API talks. So, I will not go into the details of uh, token based and HMAC based. It is just to uh, give you a glimpse of what are all the available options of authentication that you can uh, do. Actually, uh, each one of them is suitable in uh, different contexts uh, because of the time I am not going to go into the details. Yeah, uh, that is it. I, I wanted to just share that information with you. If you have any questions, are you in time? Uh, questions, yeah, I will take questions. Yeah, if you have any questions. Yeah, uh, hi, my name is Prasenjit. I was just wondering uh, since uh, you are all these data validations and all these things, would you recommend having a service layer between your ORM and your controllers in this case? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so, uh, the the libraries uh, which are out there, uh, which does the automatic job of uh, handling things, they don't have a layer. I mean, they will handle the layer, but it's not un under uh, totally under your control. So I suggest to have a layer in between. Yeah. Just a follow-up question: With yep. a lot of, uh, I mean, a lot of products right now, they, a lot of them do dashboarding. So. How would you handle that with uh, APIs? Would you dashboarding? Yeah. Would you again the analytics analytics type of? I mean, use use the dashboarding or some, okay. so. For example, you have an e-commerce website. Right? Yep. Now someone's coming using your e-commerce website. Now the thing is that users typically, even if you use a mobile app or a web app, the first page that you usually show to the user is a dashboard saying that okay, you use these many, you place these many orders. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, these are the products that we recommend yes. to you, and all those, yes. all that information gets aggregated in one spot. Yes. Wh while although you have different models for them. Yes, yes, yes. So it's the, it's via AJAX. So you you can show different pieces of the same page via different requests, right? Uh, so you can show the aggregations of uh, I mean just the orders uh, via one request, one uh, URL, and other uh, to show the aggregations, one other to show their recommendations. They talk. They actually it's one page. But uh, sending n requests, it's not just one single so request. So you would not recommend having no. one single no. endpoint no. for no. a no. no. One single uh, endpoint should do one single thing. Yeah. Yep. Ma'am, 
uh, what will be preferable, preferable way for uh, retrieving a uh, multiple customer specified ID with specific ID? For example, uh, I want uh, five customer with specific ID. Five customers? Yeah. So the ID is not a primary key there. It's not a unique ID. No, but I want a specific ID, for example, customer 1, customer 2, customer 3, and customer 4. Yeah, so that is bulk uh, bulk uh, getting or bulk, bulk posting. Uh, I didn't go into that, uh, but uh, you should be able to handle that uh, with, uh, um, maybe you can say customers, uh, uh, ID is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It, it depends on your usage. So the API designer should take a call on whether it should be a list or se comma separated values or how what, it should be. What what will be preferable way? Is it a comma or a, any separator like? Yeah, it is up to the designer, API designer to be using. I mean, com commas are uh, fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yep. Mike. Hi. Like, uh, I'm a little bit confused. Like, uh, get post and here yeah. I am. Where? Here, here, oh, here. here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I'm using get post and all these methods, like uh, when I didn't knew REST API also. So, when I'm designing an application, that means that uh, REST was existed existing that time also. Like, everything that we do, like, whenever we are creating a web app, get post and I have yeah, never so used that is delete. HTTP. Yes, so that is uh, HTTP. Uh, get post uh, put and patch. They are all HTTP verbs that mm -hmm. existed before uh, you knew what is yeah. REST, right? But the point here is uh, the the URLs would have order slash edit, order slash uh, add, or something like that. So the action what you want to do is going through the URL rather than using the HTTP verb. Okay. HTTP is so rich that it it offers uh, the verbs to do different actions. So REST is the part of uh, HTTP, it comes under that? No, 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 uh, uh, HTTP has the verbs and the status codes, uh, which are sophisticated enough uh, to, uh, to a web service to be offered as an API, meaning REST is sitting on top of the HTTP. Okay, so uh, like the uh, example you showed that, uh, that filter you were, we yeah. were using, uh, Completed equal uh, to anything yeah. we can use like page ID equal to one or yeah, yeah. to extract that. Yes. So uh, that that is a simple get uh, get request. Yes. Can also retrieve the same thing. So what it, is the yeah? Uh, it is a get request between a get request and a HTTP get request and a uh, REST API. That we are using. So uh, so uh, we are talking about web services, right? And exposing them as REST APIs. Finally, HTTP layer is there. There we are not. Uh, REST is not an alternative to HTTP. REST is built on top of a HTTP. It uses the protocol, HTTP verbs, it uses the HTTP uh, uh, status codes, nothing else. So we are using HTTP. But the difference is the architecture. When you think of uh, the API, uh, you think of the resources first, the actions uh, uh, second, and the model your application in terms of that. So it's not the actions which take over in the first place. The resources, what are all the resources you have in your application? That's the primary focus. And once you identify the resources, then you'll go, uh, go on to actions. Uh, what can I do for uh, each uh, order, or what can I do with the customer resource? What all he can do, et cetera, right? Yes? Uh, we have a question in the back. Suppose we are um, having two platforms, one is REST and another is non-REST. Now, if, uh, suppose we are working in a distributed environment or whatever, if the format is different, suppose in uh, one format is JSON and one is in XML, now uh, the two applications uh, should um, uh, have something common. Suppose one, one want to share a common API between yeah. REST and non-REST. Yeah, so How there would be a layer sitting in between which can comprehend JSON and uh, uh, XML maybe. What is that layer? You, you, one should de develop that layer. Maybe okay. if you are writing in Python, you would use JSON library and something to pass the XMLs okay. and club to together. Okay. If they are not, uh, if they are both uh, REST, then even then actually as a user, uh, you would have a layer, right? Mm -hmm. You won't directly consume the JSONs. 
you would have a UI or something like that which will consume that. So the, uh, there would be a layer finally. Okay. Then the ORM and everything should be same or no. it would be different? No, it could be different. It uh, could uh, be different. Yes. One, one may be MongoDB or one may be yes. something else. Yes, that is the best part of AP, having APIs. Okay. It will let, the, uh, let uh, the client and server evolve independently of all the architectural decisions. This okay. can be totally in C or legacy or whatever it is. And this could be in very, very uh, uh, new technology. This, okay. this could be using new technology. Thanks yeah. a lot. Yeah. So the links will let you navigate uh, for the, the self. Self is um, uh, identifying which resource that you have asked for. Yeah, you have all the information. Let's say uh, you are asking for an orders, uh, orders, a particular order. You have got all the information, the data, uh, which uh, product that you have ordered and which, with which quantity and uh, what date you have ordered for. Uh, but in the UI, you would, uh, you might need the order ID also. Where would you get it from? It's better to have it, right? So the self is by default included in the links. In Python, it depends on uh, what framework that you are using. So Django has a set of uh, libraries and Flask has its own set of libraries. Or uh, there are um, libraries which are independent of the frameworks, like Python Eve. Uh, there are uh, many actually. But it depends uh, primarily on your use case, whether it is a public API or a private API. Actually, uh, when you are thinking of a public API, then the design is a bit different than a private or an in-house API. You would, you would not care for authentication and et cetera, et cetera, if it is a private API, right? Hello, ma'am. Uh, hello. Yeah. This is, this is Jason Shukla. Yep. Uh, ma'am, recently, uh, uh, I was in the condition that where I have to use uh, almost too much filter for getting the list. At that time, we have to use the post request for getting the list of the thing. So is it the rest Because friendly? the URL is too long. Yes. So it is the rest friendly uh, thing or is there any solution for? Uh, Let it be. Pattern? It's readable. Uh, unless uh, it's not readable. We're using the post request because uh, no, we have to no, use post no. request. So is, is it uh, no, not the Post rest is not meant for uh, getting the resources. Okay. Or, uh, you, you should not use uh, post unless uh, you are modifying something uh, in uh, the server state. Uh, yes. And is there any particular standard for the rest, or is it the common uh, type uh, no. of practice so sadly, to follow? Sadly, there's no standard for uh, um, rest. So there is something, a very good site that we have come across, uh, uh, jasonapi.org, okay. okay. uh, which, which is uh, trying to lay down a few set of standards. But it's not actually standardized. It's an ongoing process that they suggest uh, f the URLs could be like this, the error handling could be like this. and stuff. It's better for you to just go through jasonapi.org. Okay. Uh, one last thing. Yep. For updating the record put is, uh, you have suggested, but post is I think also can be used. Is it a uh, good practice to use the post for updating uh, records? So it, 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 it depends on how you are creating actually. So you can okay. see here, uh, right, here we are, not, we are not keeping slash one here. Okay. It is, uh, the endpoint is slash customers. Yes. And if I do the same thing again, yes. slash customers slash two will be created. So post. Uh, uh, for a specific customer, is it, uh, the ID we provide. If, if you ID provide and then slash post. ID, yes. it's going to be item potent. Yes. Then you, you should use put. Okay. Thank you. So if you don't, it's, it should be post. Yep. Uh, a quick announcement, then we'll take two last questions. So anyone who hasn't gotten the feedback form can take it from our volunteers. So, okay, and uh, yeah, ma'am. One last question. Uh, I want to, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do a lot of uh, request, and we'll get the response. So my question is like, uh, are there any package we'll be able to advise? Because uh, I'm any? basically looking for automation perspective. For example, if I do request for VM in place of cloud, hundred or thousand VMs will be there. I'm interested for particular kind of VM, as you shown uh, customer name or whatever it is. For automation perspective, automation framework will also other side become big. Are there any package in case of Python? Would you suggest uh, the libraries? Uh, exactly, that will be helpful for uh, automation perspective. That's what I mean. To say. You are getting right. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we take this offline yeah, exactly. so that it can be dis uh, yeah, sure. descriptive? I will yeah. attend that uh, auditorium two session. Then I'll come. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Others I will mail you also. Hope sure. You yep. Thanks. Full talk Thank and you. patiently solving all the queries of all the people over here. I would like to give ma'am a small gift from PyCon India for giving a wonderful talk.